We are super excited to finally bring extensive audio control to the TriCaster switches using an external fader panel. Well, we have had TriCaster control for a long time with Unisketch, but especially audio has had some frustrating limitations. This is all history now, because with our new Blue Pill platform, we can control and monitor any number of audio sources on your TriCaster. And with our Waveboard controller with Blue Pill inside, this is all baked into a single self-contained box. Waveboard is a wonder in itself with completely flexible channel layout that has crisp OLED displays, it has three buttons, an encoder, and of course, a motorized fader. This video will take you through how easy it is to operate the Waveboard and how to configure the panel to your specific needs. So let's get started on the first promise, how easy it is to set up. Because what you see right here is the Waveboard V2 with nothing configured on it except a paging button up here. Now, there are certain things that you always want to check. Is there any configuration in my device, like in the TriCaster? And actually, there's none. The TriCaster not just needs to be turned on, and you need to know its IP address. Inside of Reactor, Reactor is this web UI that comes with the Waveboard, and really, it is driven by the Waveboard. So we are currently connected to the Waveboard, having everything inside itself. What we do here is to set up the TriCaster as a device. And we have a number of different TriCaster models that we can add. In this case, it does not auto discover, so we need to add it manually. But we can quickly search TriCaster and you see there's a number of models that we can pick from this list here. So we could choose any of these. Let's just do this for fun and then see what we have inside here. There are a number of different models for the TriCaster series. Then we can pick a name. We can also select the device ID because if you have multiple TriCaster systems that you want to control from the same waveboard, which you can do, they need to have individual numbers. That's what we call a device ID. It's a number you assign. You could pick the number 10, 1000. But usually we go with one, two, and so on, so on, so on. Now, then you need to have an IP address. The port needs to stay this. If you want to talk to the TriCaster, there might be a username and a password and all those things. So that's what you need inside Reactor to connect to your TriCaster. Now, we'll just delete this because we already have this device added up here on this IP address on our system, and we can see we are connected. So that's connecting to the TriCaster and confirming that we are connected. On the other side, on the left side, we are connected to the waveboard. Well, yeah, the waveboard is connected to itself. But uh, the secret is that you could actually add additional panels. I kind of wanted to save this point to the end of the video, but you guys who own like a Airfly, an Airfly or Airfly Pro or some panel on the Unisketch platform, you can actually benefit from all of Blue Pill by adding your Airfly here. Let's just find this manually. So we search Airfly. This Airfly controller could easily be added next to the Waveboard V2. And the Waveboard V2 would be the master panel that drives the Airfly. So you can do amazing things like that inside of Reactor. I just want you to know because this might be the right solution for you. But in this video, we'll focus on the Waveboard and how to set it up. So how do I set it up? I'm connected to the TriCaster. Now I need to add some channels or some sources to the channels. Well, it's really easy. You just go for the blue button called Device Selector. It has zero entries right now, but we need at least one item to make sense of this, right? So we just click this button and we have this nice little view coming up down here where we just press new. And as I press new, I get like a new entry, which apparently is, is so far blank and we need to, to put some stuff in here. And so we will, we'll look for which device configuration is it that we are going for. And now you can actually see that the Waveboard V2 is able to mix and match audio sources from many different devices, not only TriCaster, but switches like ATEM vMix, also Prodigy MP, which is a product from Direct Out, could be added. And you can really mix it all up on this surface, which is, once again, the point of Skahoy products that we can make user-friendly and customized um, setups that can integrate many different devices. But today, We'll just pick TriCaster input channels. In fact, it is a little bit unprecise to call it input channels because this is also how you would access the master uh, output of the TriCaster. But you'll see in a moment. So we just pick this one. And if we want to sort of replicate that, we just press this duplication button a few times. Then we need the device index. And the device index is the number that we have assigned to our TriCaster. So if we open up here, we can see device ID is, is 1. 
device ID and device index is the same thing. But if you want, you can also add show advanced and that will give you a number of options in the UI of Reactor, including showing you the device ID, which in this case is kind of useful. So we'll just put in device ID number one, we'll duplicate it a few times, we'll then pick audio channels. And here, the good news is that for all inputs, it's pretty easy, just start with one. So input one, input two, input three, and so on. You just type in those numbers. And let's just quickly go over to our TriCaster instance here, where we can see we have some audio on input number two and three. So we can pick those, but we also see some audio over here on the master. And I think on one of our um, DDRs here, DDR1, we also have some audio. So we want to add those sources just in a moment, but we'll pick here number two and number three. And we should actually now be able to enjoy on the wave board that we have the VU metering running and we also have the faders here for both these channels. There's, and, and we'll come back to that in a moment. So let's explore that just for a moment because we can always continue with the configuration. We've just set up two channels so easily. We could add you know, input number four easily. That, that's pretty clear by now. So what is it we're looking at here? Well, we have a muted option on this button down here. And now we also want to see what happens inside of TriCaster, right? Because now we can monitor what happens on input number one and two. So muting is obviously happening as I'm pressing the lower button. If we look up here, we also have a solo button. And with a solo button, we can solo these sources as well. And notice in the display, in the OLED displays close to the channel, we also see when these options are enabled, we see there's a little label popping up. And when that label is not there, there is even a title. It says solo, so that we know the lower button of these two is doing exactly that. Now, what is the button just above it then doing? Well, it says gain. And this is actually a two-way button. A two-way button means that you can press the ed edges of the button and it will um, bring in different control signals to the system. And in this case, we have coded it so that the upper edge will increase the value and the lower edge will decrease the value. So just notice in the display, it's pretty tiny, but it actually increases the gain value and it decreases the gain value as I'm pressing the lower edge. I think we may even be able to hold it. Yes, so you can sometimes hold it and it will increase the value like that. So that's the, f the three buttons on an input channel for the TriCaster. Up here, we have balance. So I can turn this knob and I can adjust the balance of the source in either direction. Now, with encoders, there's often a trick, not always, but often there's a little trick, especially with long range values, that if you press it, you are enabling a course mode. And as the course mode is enabled, you see that the steps becomes much bigger. So in this case, pretty big steps compared to the non-course mode where you can do fine adjustments. But that's kind of nice to know. And let's say that you get really far away from home, you can always press and hold and it's going to reset. So that's the function associated with the encoders up here on each of these channels. Let's get back to the configuration and explore a few other things. Um, for instance, we can add a color option to the channel. So we could choose pink for these um, two channels. And now you see that the channels get actually colored by the encoder. And you can also see it a little bit from the side here that the audio faders has LED light inside of them. So that is also identifying the channels through this, this color option that we have in here. You are even able to name it differently. And with respect to the name, the name that you see, or, or the name of the input is actually shown in the display up here. But you can also type in alternative names here. So this could be um, Laurel and Hardy. I don't know why that came to mind, but it did. And now these two labels are actually put into the display just above the VU metering. Which gives me a chance to talk about VU metering because that's another exciting and actually data-wise um, relatively intense task to pull all this audio level metering data out of a system like the TriCaster. And that's one of the things that is significantly improved on the WaveBot V2 with Blue Pill inside. Now you can see already that as I'm moving the fader, you see this is moving in the TriCaster uh, UI as well. So obviously this is happening and um, would it work the other way? Let us just see if I can do that the other way and sure thing, yes it does. Now the VU metering, the data that you see up here is actually following along on the display, which is the nice thing about this crisp OLED display just next to the fader that it shows you the audio level of that channel. These two sources are, as far as I just know, 
uh, it's like a tone generator, so they do not pop up and down a whole lot. But as we're looking at the interface, we can see the master channel is doing just that. So let's just add the master in a moment. So that was labeling. It is coloring the channel. We have explored what the buttons are uh, doing. Let's go back and play a little bit with the configuration. So what we can also do is to reorder the channels in the configuration interface. That's going to be really useful as you want to build up uh, sources on your wave board in a specific order and uh, to optimize the workflow for the user. And this is really easy because all you need to do is to just drag the channels around and notice what happens here on the wave board instantly as I release it, it's going to, to swap around the channels on the wave board. So that's a really easy thing to do. Now the master channel and the DDR, we want to add those two as well. So let's just add a few more entries here. I'll just do this like that. And then, um, what you need to, to copy this is really essentially to, to mark it. And then as you then press duplicate, it will take the last touched value and then duplicate it for you. So if I, it should also work if I put in one here, then we should be able to duplicate that down here. And then at other times, like with input sources, you often want to increase the value. So guess what the plus one button does? Now we're not gonna do that because we are going to select the master, but basically if we, um, in this field and we press plus one, it's going to just take the next value and the next value and the next value. So you see how quickly, easily these tools can help you to populate a whole table of input sources easily in this way. That's really, really powerful with labels, colors and everything. But now comes a slightly complex thing. And I'm not saying this is perfect because ideally adding the master channel would just be a drop down. But we cannot always give that to you in the pace that we would like to. So in this case, we'll have to ask you to look up in a table, what is the number of the master channel? And it's luckily easy because it's all available from inside of Reactor. What you do is you go up here to the new tech TriCaster device core and you click it, then you click parameter list. And actually what you see now is a complete overview of all the parameters inside any TriCaster system that we support. So just to give you an idea about what you're looking at here is the different TriCaster models inside of each of these, which inputs are we supporting? And we can go on and on and on in this pretty, pretty long list. It's a PDF file, so you can download. Don't print it, please. But you can explore it, you can search for parameters, and you know what we can do with the TriCaster. But in this case, we want to search up audio of some sort. And probably, let me see, it might be that the input numbers are probably the same in all these cases. But the point is that we need the number of the master from this list. And we find that 8000 is the number that is being used for the master in all these cases of audio. So I don't really need to find the specific audio parameter that I'm actually looking for here. Uh, we can do that in a moment. But uh, notice 8,000 and also DDR1 is 2001. So those are the two numbers that I need to know. And then I can go in here and I could add, let's just do that, add a new channel here. Actually, I wanna add a little bit of new things. No, I don't want to have different device IDs here, but I would like to just see if I can get, because I wanna show you the paging as well. So now I have seven, I need eight and I need nine. Okay. And then I should be good. Just copy this over and copy. And then yes, why not just add input sources in a few cases here? Let me see, where are we? Just put in five. All right. That was populating quickly. Okay, guys, um, keep in mind 8,000 for the master, but right now we have actually eight audio sources from the TriCaster in the system. And as I'm pulling these faders, you can see that these different input sources that I have assigned are all moving in the TriCaster and vice versa. Now, I only have audio on one of these sources, but the main thing was that I got above eight channels in that list, and that means the page you're here on the left side got activated. And now I have a second page with that one channel, channel number nine that I added just as the last one here. So in this case, you see that the wave board will easily expand up to 32. And I'm told that if we did so, even 33 would be accessible because the lowest key here will turn into some kind of multi-paging key that will give you access to sources even beyond that. Anyway, the master. The master channel. Okay, let's go back to that one. So um, we'll just take take this one in this um, 
out here on the on the right. No, actually, what? Why not make it the first one? We'll make it the first one, and we'll paint it yellow because then we can put the master in every single case on the first uh, fader in the system. And what I need to do is to type in eight thousand here. And I'll just go up here and type in 8000 and I might label it master and master down here. Now it felt like I left that field without actually putting in the label. I don't know why. And then I also see that the audio channel needs to be 8000 here. It did not pick it up in the first try. So do we have it right? Channel number nine, channel number one, 8000, 8000, master and master. So if I'm paging between these two, we see that the first channel is kept the same because the information is the same. So in this way, you would be able to populate all these and then replicate a few channels to stay in the same position on the panel. But the main point is that we actually do have the master control working now. And let's just move over here and see if we can um, see if I can provoke it to have a little bit of view metering happening. Anyway, if I'm changing this, we also see some change in the master volume here, which is illustrated on the view meter. Before we wrap up this video, I'll show you two things. The first one will make you excited and the second one will freak you out. The first one is, let's say, the operator of this panel is away from his position. Or if he fell asleep. I hope that's not the case. We have a simulator inside of Reactor. The simulator looks like this, and it's like a replica of the panel. And as I'm moving a fader on the real panel, it's also moving in the simulator. If I'm moving the fader in the simulator, it's also moving on the panel. So that's a pretty nice little thing to be able to do inside Reactor. And I wanted you to know that. Now for the thing that will freak you out, and that is how can we understand the underlying configuration? Now, when we talk about Blue Pill bringing ease of use to you guys, it is a lot of complexity that we have been able to bake into something as simple as this table you saw for input selection. We call it in this case device selector. It could be main, many other things, but these blue buttons are covering for the configuration you can do. But some of you know that we probably can do even much more. But to do much more, you need a longer exam. And this is where the configuration tab is the experimental country for you guys who want to be adventurous and get into this. So. I'm just quickly going to show you where can I actually see the parameter associated with the fader. And it turns out that inside configuration tab, you see this whole layer structure. And inside the layer structure, you find channel one and you can find finally what defines the function of fader on channel one. So if I click this, I see in the inspector over here, the parameter that are associated with the fader. If I edit this one, you can see that it's coming from the TriCaster device core. It's called audio volume. So that is actually the parameter name we would be looking for and substituting with something else if we wanted to inside the parameter list. Uh, now that we are here, I can show you a few other things. For instance, that the device index, whether it is device one or two, is being inserted as a variable. Also, the audio channel is being inserted in this way. So actually, this whole parameter reference includes two variables that can have different values depending on which channel they are assigned to. And now you begin to get freaked out by, why, by what I'm saying. And if that's the case, don't worry, because your place to be is on the home screen. And this is where we have this constant set, which is the generic name for this kind of table, where you can set up all your audio channels really easily and rearrange them and color them as you want. But some of you guys really are excited about seeing the depth of how we can configure these things. And I want you to know that that is eventually the final destination of everything driven by an underlying JSON structure that you can also explore if you Go in here, find that little button called JSON, and then you can read your way into the configuration of blue pill controllers. So that's all I got for you today, guys. I thank you very much for following this video. I hope it's exciting news for you. Please follow us on social media, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and reach out to our sales team or support team anytime. We would be happy to hear from you.